History is full of news moments that are considered truly iconic because of their immense influence and impact on the world. The last 20 years have been no exception to this. We had the 9-11 terrorist attacks in 2001, Hurricane Katrina in 2005, the deaths of Osama bin Laden and Steve Jobs in 2011, Brexit and Trump in 2016, and then, of course, who will ever forget the global COVID shutdown of 2020? Each of those moments, and many others like them, act as a perfect example of the kind of historic events which can truly mark a generation. Those events that I just mentioned will live forever by way of our mental rewinds. Sort of a, do you remember where you were and what you were doing the moment you first learned about these things? Interestingly enough, I first heard about every single one of those iconic moments via that little winged electronic messenger we know and love as Twitter. In fact, I've become so accustomed to receiving my quote-unquote breaking news via social media platforms, I genuinely struggle to remember what it was like when we had to depend on printed documents such as newspapers and magazines. Even more perplexing is the thought of having to depend on news spreading via human messengers traveling only at the speed of a horse, one person at a time. Today, the first person to break a story is only separated from the masses of follow-ups by fractions of a second all around the globe. It's truly remarkable when you stop to think it through. If nothing else, it certainly adds some context to the message of our third and final Christmas angel. The scene itself is also critical. It makes for another one of those perfect mental rewinds. Now, growing up in the Deep South, I can just imagine the story being told something like this. So, me and my buddies, we're out in the fields watching the sheep. It was dark, cold night, and a little moonlight, and a few visible stars. We could hear the wolves howling in the distance which added to the creepy factor. Most shepherds, they didn't work at this time of year. We're the lucky ones, I suppose, but it was tough, smelly, long work. Fighting off them hungry predators was not our favorite pastime, if you know what I mean. I suppose you could say we're all a little worked up. We looked up and an angel of the Lord was standing near us. I literally thought I was going to die. I've never been so scared in all my life. And whether you find camping in the wilderness to be peaceful creepy or sometimes a little bit of both. One thing is for sure, any unexpected guest is probably going to scare the pants off of you too. And if that unexpected visitor happens to be from another dimension, well, Terrified probably doesn't even begin to describe how you might feel. Luke 2 says that when the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds, quote, they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news. End quote. Now, I have to pause for just a moment because this point is just too good to pass up. Have you ever tried to get the attention of someone who is in a state of hysteria or utter panic? <laughs> yeah, it was probably just like that. The angel had to assure them that they were safe and then get them to calm down and focus. I'm sure that it would have been a whole lot worse had I been one of those shepherds. And that's how the biggest news in the history of all mankind was delivered. Not via Twitter, newspaper, or horsebound messenger. It was delivered by heavenly messenger to a bunch of scared, exhausted, stinky shepherds who were apparently southern shepherds, judging by my accent, who rarely ever got to hear the latest news about anything. And what exactly was this message? It was simple. Today, your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. In other words, Jesus is here. Now, I don't know what your situation is right now. Maybe things are awesome and they just couldn't be any better. I certainly hope that that's the case. But if it's not, if you find yourself exhausted by life or even frightened by some overwhelming circumstance, I want to give you a better way to think in the midst of your situation. I want you to know that God himself 
has some really, really good news for you. And that's that Jesus is here. He's the Savior who can deliver you from evil. He's the Christ who is anointed to give you eternal life. And he is the Lord who will guide you every step of your way, if you'll let him. That's the good news that surpasses all other good news in all of history. And my honest prayer is that this message will mark you for all of eternity. Remember, a better mind always leads to a better life.